from the butterfly to turco crib to the reverse there's been a fair share of new and different goalie techniques that come out in the world and today we're gonna discover a new one called the panda So I'm going to quickly talk about the Panda and try to explain it and what I've learned about it so far. So it's pretty much an uh, overlap technique with a reverse technique. So you're doing a reverse with an overlap. So you're not on the post, so it's kind of different. Um, one big key factor on it is that you're going to be flat. You won't be square to the shooter on the dead angles. So the whole idea is you're flat, you're doing a reverse, and the pucks are going to hit you and stay on the same side. And if there is a pass, you're already kind of flat. So you're easier to turn and push other than having this turn around and then make a push. So yeah, it's, it's new, it's different. Had a chance to work on it at the Global Goaltending Retreat in Breckenridge, Colorado, hosted by the Goalie Guild. And the big man himself, Brian Decord. Uh, from Stop It Goaltending. Once the guy explained it all and did a great presentation on the ice of what it is and kind of got to work through that stuff. So I'm not going to try to explain it more than that. So I'm going to throw it over to Brian and hope you guys enjoy his little segment and learn something new. So Mike Smith is in that. Rossi Matthews is coming down the way. He's going to be on his post, right? He's on his post, Austin Matthews takes one step over this imaginary line. What's he gonna do? He's gonna draw a laser on top of this. Automatic. He'll do that a hundred times out of a hundred times. I got a whole freaking bunch of clips on Ask Austin Matthews on him scoring off goalies right after the transition line. So when I'm teaching goal scoring, you don't even look at the net. You come down that wing, you take one step over that transition line, and you take a shot. Now there was a point, he knows it so well, like if he comes around that, let's say that first stick over there, he'll just shoot it, or he'll pass it. Gazaleski, transitioning as he passes the puck, right? Mirage is transitioning as he passes the puck. Or if he comes lower, he recognizes, the goal is still going to be on his feet, and he's going to transition once he goes through that little hole right there. So we had a string of goals in the NHL with pucks going over guys' ears. Remember that? It was like one week, it was like almost every day. So there was an article in In Goal. It was called, uh, they introduced a move called the Panda. Anybody familiar with the Panda? The Panda's taking a bunch of different techniques and putting them all into one. So you've got an overlap, right? You've got an undersquare or an RVH. So what's gonna happen in, in a panda is instead of squaring up, think two your ass and you're flat. So as the guy goes down the lane here and he's driving up, you're not gonna put the RVH, you're gonna be flat. On the release of the shot, you're actually going to use an RVH without going into your post. The whole key to this is there's no angle left for this guy to shoot. You've got distance to your position and all you've got to carry, cover. If you're in an overlap on this, he's got pass off pad, you got rebounds, your shoulders are here, he makes a play, and now you've got to rotate the plan. So think about it this way. If you're in a panda, you're not automatically going to go to an RVH. Every time you go to an RVH, Steve Guerrero would say you use a chip. You use a chip off your hip, right? You keep on passing those chips in, eventually you're going to have your surgery. So it eliminates just going down, up, down, up. So now, I'm flat, and I'm going to keep your ass. I'm staying on my feet. I'm just not going down and up. Now when the shot comes, Position, this skate, this pad, you don't even see it. If he's going to miss the net here, that's going to the corner, gone. 
right? What I'm not going to do is I'm not going to put myself in a position to get a rebound now. So now it goes deep in the corner, and in that overlap, underscore, charging it, pack protected, I'm covering only what I have to cover. So now think about this. Play goes behind the net, and you're in the overlap. You have to rotate, plant, push. What's going to happen on a wraparound, we always think, you may not get a shot here, we always think a guy tucks the puck in. No, what happens? And then it's banked off your skate. So your angle of your skate going back to the field is important. If I'm in a panda, and I'm here, now, he goes around, I bring my foot in, guess what? I'm flat, I don't have a big rotation to go back, and it's an easy push where I'm going laterally as opposed to back diagonal. So, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this, I'll tell you one other thing, you're gonna do it another stage. Grab a puck over there. Go to the corner and walk out. So here's another use of a pan that you're going to do in most days. He's going to walk out this way. We used to teach, my company used to teach this. Now we teach this. All we do is what we call a side step. So I'm here, side step, I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. The idea is, if he walks out, I'm here, he's going to shoot, I'm in a panda, no rebound, no back leg exposed, where's the rebound going to go? Everything stays to the strong side. Thoughts? Yeah, when you start flattening out, like, you track it down square, on yep. Matthew's coming down, he hits yeah, that line, square here. then you start flattening out. So you can use... A glide grip. Bazzi is going to use his chops. You'll use an open and a drift. So that doesn't matter what technique you're going to use. What really matters is once he hits that transition line, there's no more net to shoot at. No. You are loading a uh, little push in case if there is a pass? Yes. So what happens is, the idea is if there's a pass, I'm still on my feet. So you talk to guys that now do this, that don't automatically go into their RDH, they're like, oh my god, so much less energy in the game. Because they're so used to down, up. Oh, every single time. Now it's... I'm okay. I'm okay. Coming out of the corner. Drop. The minute they start getting a little bit farther out, then it's... Square and you're taking a little bit. Is there a rule of thumb? Like when you put... Right now you've got your skate inside the post. You put it skate outside the post. When, they cross when it's already the down, so I've got a rush rough. scenario, yeah. and then I have a walkout. So if I'm in a walkout, I'm going to go outside. Yeah. If I'm on a rush, I'm outside, and I'm just ready to drop into my RBH. Now, the thought process is, when you drop to your RBH, think about it. How many high ankle strains do you see guys going into their post? Joe record last year, Vancouver. Just a simple RDH out for the rest of the season, right? So now the difference is on your hip health. Now you're not jamming your skate into the post. Now you're actually got nothing here. So now you have a little bit more room to let your hip and your body go. So there you have it, the Panda. Brand new. Are you going to use it? I don't know if I am. But I can definitely see parts of the Panda coming into my game, like being 
being flat on the dead angle and that way not having to do the full rotation to get to the far side. Uh, but yeah, I just feel like I have to be very comfortable on doing the reverse in an overlap when you are not square like that. One, uh, one worry came into my mind is right away the, when you're not square, kind of that low far side right over the pad. Uh, I kind of could feel like there's some squeakers that might go through the arms and stuff when you're not square. But yeah, it's just about putting in that those reps when you get on the ice and kind of work on that stuff. But a lot of that stuff does make sense. And I really think it could be beneficial to a lot of goalies. Uh, just to kind of get them thinking a little bit. You don't have to adapt and do the whole panda with all those aspects, but I feel like some sort of variation I will be using, at least trying out, hopefully getting my game and make my game better that way. So yeah, very interesting stuff. Hope you guys learned something from that video. Uh, blew my mind when I first heard it. I was like, what is this? Never been not square to the puck, which was kind of weird, but uh, yeah, kind of cool to see something new and big, big shout out to Brian Decord for bringing that out for me. and. Uh, yeah, I guess next up is just heading on the ice and trying it out if it's something for me. So let me know if you will use it, if you like it, have you heard about it before? I think it was in Ingo Magazine a couple of months ago, but yeah, um, you know, I'm open to new things if, as long as it makes my game, game better. So yeah, like I said, let me know if you're going to use that. What do you think about the Panda? And yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like, subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Bye.